So you're thinking of moving to Northeast Ohio, whether you're relocating for work or you want to move close to friends or family, and uh, you're just not sure if moving to Northeast Ohio is the right choice for you. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss the things that surprised me about moving back, things I wish I would have remembered before moving back to Cleveland. And as a bonus, at the end, stick around for it. My wife, who's never lived here before, is going to mention some of the things that she wished she would have known before I convinced her to come here with me seven years ago. So that's coming up. Hey, it's Joel Gableman with Gableman Group, and if this is your first time to living in Northeast Ohio, this channel is about family, lifestyle, real estate, of course, and fun things to do around the city. So if that's of interest to you, you are in the right place. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the surprises or things we wish we would have known. We're gonna get into that. Quickly, if you're thinking of moving here, if you already live here and you're thinking of upsizing or downsizing, we get calls from people all over the place. I'm gonna put our information also in the description. Give us a call, text, email. We love helping people. So let's get into the video. This is not a bash on Cleveland. Obviously, I moved back here, um, but I do think people should have their eyes wide open when hearing about things that surprised me and things that surprised my wife when moving here. And again, no particular order. Number one would be cost of living, and I'm going to throw taxes in also. So you can get a phenomenal home in Northeast Ohio relatively cheaply. Now, full disclosure, I've been out. I was away from Cleveland for 10 years after graduate school. I worked seven years in Chicago and three years in Northern California and San Francisco, some of the most expensive places in the country. So uh, a little bit of just frame of reference background there. Um, in San Francisco, it was around $1,000 per square foot to buy a place. So a 2,500 square foot home in the city of San Francisco would be around two and a half million dollars. Here, you can get an absolutely gorgeous home for considerably under 700,000. You can get a great home under half a million and you can get a really, really nice home under 300,000. You can get a solid, nice home for under 250, under 200 even in certain areas. So my friends in San Francisco wanted to give me money because he said, Joel, a garage costs me $400,000 and I looked online and oh my gosh, I can get a house for the price of a garage. So the cost of living is outstanding. Taxes, um, depending on where you live. No, I live on the east side in the University Heights, Shaker Heights, Cleveland Heights area. Taxes where I live are around 4%. So a $300,000 house, don't be surprised when taxes are around 12,000 a year. Other suburbs of Cleveland, they're going to be considerably less. There's just trade-offs. Just be aware when you look into pricing, you have to also consider other costs besides your principal and interest. You obviously have to look at the taxes and the insurance. So um, when you're looking at taxes, just be considerate of where you're living, not just the price of the home. Two, speaking of homes, the age of homes. I have friends in different masterminds over the years, Texas, Seattle, Florida, uh, Georgia, so there are some areas just have a lot of new developments, right? And yes, we are in a time right now in December of 2022 where inventory is low, but Northeast Ohio, depending on where you live, the homes can be older. So where I live, a lot of the homes were built in the 20th century, 1920s, 30s, and 40s. And there are just some trade-offs, great characteristics, great community. Um, but now we bought a flip. That said, things like Ventilation is not as new as a home built in the 21st century. Things like uh, there could be asbestos tape on ventilation. There could be asbestos insulation. There's probably plaster in parts of the home instead of sheetrock. Um, knob and tube instead of Romex. Uh, there also could be things like with your sore line. If you buy a place here, I always suggest and recommend highly to my clients that they get a sore line scope as part of an inspection. You definitely should get an inspection on any home you buy. But... <coughs> Sore line scope, if it's a clay sore line, taking all the undesirables from the home over to the main line, if there are structural issues, if there's intrusion from tree roots, getting that fixed after you buy the house can be seven, eight, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. There are just trade-offs when you're getting an older home and just be mindful of what to look for. Three, the hot areas. So when Ash, my wife and I moved back here, friends and family said, oh my gosh, you don't have kids. You need to live in the hot area, Tremont, Ohio City, downtown Cleveland. There's a renaissance, new restaurants and clubs and bars and all these things to do and live on the waterfront in this new apartment complex, which is stunning. And they're right. There's so much out there. The difference is coming from a major metropolitan area, it didn't scratch the same itch. So 
coming from California or from San Francisco, prior to that Chicago, having five, you know, six blocks of really cool things to do. Um, and then maybe you don't want to go past those six, seven blocks was just not the same itch as being in a large city. So if you are coming from a large metropolitan area, just set expectations accordingly. Similarly, if it's a Tuesday, Wednesday night and it's 1030 at night, your choices and places to eat that are open are going to be considerably smaller. Now, that said, having three young boys, I have three young children under seven, uh, being married, uh, I'm not out at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, but sometimes I'm hungry and, you know, it, it is what it is. That's just the trade-offs of uh, living in Northeast Ohio. Four, hot spots. Let's talk about the food. Oh my gosh, in a prior life, I was probably a chef. I love cooking, I love eating, I love all things food. So, um, you know, just off the top of my head, I'm probably missing people, you've got Doug Katz, Jonathan Sawyer, Michael Simon, Dante Bacuzzi. You've got so many high-level chefs that have phenomenal restaurants here. In my own area, within a 10-minute drive, there's three microbrew distilleries in my neighborhood that I could think of. I'm probably missing some. So whether you like craft beer, whether you like, you know, going to a place that's a wine bars or cocktail bars or a new barbecues place, dim sum, Korean, sushi. There, there's always something new, inventive, and creative here and outstanding food here in Cleveland, Ohio. Number five, this, if I had a rank, would probably be in the number one, if not number one, number two, is healthcare. So the Cleveland Clinic in 2022 was ranked the second best hospital in the world behind the Mayo Clinic, in the world. And University Hospitals is phenomenal also. You've got, <coughs> excuse me, you got Metro, the clinic, UH. These are world-class organizations. Now, fortunately, my family, none of us have major life-threatening issues or diseases, but God forbid, if something happened, we've got the best, if not top three, in our backyard of phenomenal places. And it's amazing. I've got clients that are uh, you know, either older, they're selling, and they're downsizing, and there's a fair number of them that are staying in Cleveland simply because cost of living and having world-class health care is really hard to beat in other places around the country. So that is a blessing that we have here. Six, things to do, especially like me if you have a family, it is non-stop. We've got three major sports teams, the Cavs, the Guardians, and the Browns. Sorry if you're a Browns fan, it is what it is. You've got collegiate teams you can watch, museums, family, the, the, the children's museum is tremendous. You've got the Botanical Gardens, Natural History Museum, the Science Center. You've got, I don't know if I mentioned the zoo, there, there's a ton of places to go. You've got the Cleveland Pops, you've got the Cleveland Orchestra. When I was finishing grad school, I had a friend of mine who came to Case Western Reserve specifically for the Cleveland Orchestra, and he said, he loved classical music. The Cleveland Orchestra, I didn't know this, I, I like classical music, but I was not aware of this. <clears throat> Cleveland Orchestra is one of the top 10 orchestras in the world. I think when my friend came over, uh, they were number three or two or maybe number one. But if you like music, the, you, <laughs> you got some of the best musicians in the world sitting in your backyard. Number seven, and I might seem like a little bit of a you know, complainer about this, but it's the weather. And I know... I was talking to a friend the other day. He said to me, Joel, you lived in Chicago for seven years. It's the same weather. I, it's been a while. I, and I've been in Cleveland for seven years at this point, back here. But, um, you know, three, four days ago, it was in the 40s. It was nice out. Um, I was still, still debating whether or not to take my uni pizza oven inside. I love my uni pizza oven. That's a whole other story. But uh, I said, well, uh, I don't know. And my wife says to me, you should take it inside. There's a winter advisory. So I took it inside. Next morning, there was eight inches of snow. It was like minus two degree wind chill. You could tell a little bit, got a little bit of a cold. The kids got a little bit of a cold. The wife's got a little bit of a cold. That's just Cleveland weather. There's a expression, if you don't like the weather in Cleveland, wait five minutes. Just make sure you bundle a little bit. If it's cold in the morning, it might get warmer. If it's warm, it can get colder. Uh, not the end of the world. Summers can get really hot. Winters can get really cold. There's uh, the whole changing of the seasons, which is always beautiful to see, especially in the fall, go to the metro parks and watch all the beautiful leaves changing. But it can get hot, it can get cold. The weather is what it is. Finally, let's get into what my wife thought. So she has never lived here before. 
So these are the three things that surprised her the most. <coughs> Number one, again in no order, is the east side, west side divide. So it used to be, and I'm going to throw Solon in also, it used to be stereotypical or stereotypes that the east side was old money, white collar, west side was new money and blue collar. Now a lot has changed. You got all, a lot of the professional athletes all lived on the west side. They all live on the west side. Um, there's some beautiful areas over there, newer developments, newer homes. Your money goes up maybe a little bit further depending on where you're living. West Lake, Avon, Avon Lake, absolutely gorgeous homes, Rocky River. Um, all of that said, uh, it's funny that people, I live 15 minutes away from the west side, maybe 20. And I'm going to put Solon in the mix. Solon is one of the most desirable suburbs on the east side. It's got the best school system in Cleveland. My wife did not, my wife did not notice this for herself that she had this uh, stereotype. She said people who already live here, they do. It was her perception. Now, she's a psychologist, so her whole job is the study of people and behavior. But she said that people that already live here, they put these stereotypes or differences between east side and west side. She doesn't, so I thought that was very interesting. Number two is food. She had agreed, she agreed wholeheartedly with me to get the quality, the variety, um, <clears throat> all that. She was just surprised how robust the food scene here is in Cleveland. And three was the ease of living. <coughs> weather, I'm blaming the weather for sure. The ease of living. So she said, you know, the ability to take the kids and throw them in the car, get some food, go to the park, drive over to get some ice cream and be able to drive without tons of traffic, be able to find relatively easy parking and then get the kids and go home or just go out on your own if she wants to go grab coffee with friends or we have a date night, whatever it is. It's so much easier. We're not bumper to bumper traffic. San Francisco, you can go two hours bumper to bumper to go five miles. Chicago, especially if you're driving to the Burbs where my in-laws are, you could spend an hour and a half, two hours in the car to go what should be only 30 minutes um, it could be absolutely brutal. And in Cleveland, in general, uh, it's just the ease of living, the ease of traffic and moving around is so much simpler. So let me know what you think. Those are kind of the highlights for me, uh, surprises and surprises uh, from my wife. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. You know, I'd love in the comments below, did I miss something? Do you live here? And do you think, oh, you know what? I agree with you on these things. I don't agree with you on those things. Or you left out this, or you shouldn't have included that. Whatever it is, I'd love to hear. Also, if you're thinking of moving here or if you already live here and you're upsizing or downsizing and you just want to pick a brain, again, we'd love to help you. Give us a call, text, email. Information is in the description. In the meantime, consider liking and subscribing for new videos that are coming out. And I'll see you in the next video.